Happy Wednesday, third graders. I hope y'all are ready for another English lesson. Remember on Monday, we started reading our new book, Lincoln's Legacy, and today we're going to read the next chapter. Remember what happened in chapter one was Mr. C, or Mr. Carruthers, asked his class a question. What would happen if um, President Lincoln gave up and didn't give the Emancipation Proclamation? Remember, Abigail had a really hard time sitting quietly in class, and so she was needing to go talk to Mr. C after school. So let's see what happens next. Okay, chapter two is called Time Travel. While Ms. Bertram's reading Time Travel, I want you to think really carefully about some similarities and differences between Abigail and Mr. C. Remember, this book is written from Abigail's perspective so far. So let's get started. It's chapter two, time travel. After school, I found Mr. Carruthers in the hallway in front of his classroom. I'm sorry, I said, lowering my eyes. I didn't want to look at him. I held out a piece of lined white notebook paper. I had written neatly on both sides. I wrote an answer during recess, I explained. Mr. Carruthers took the paper from me. You didn't have to do that extra work, especially during recess. I wrote down what I thought would happen if Abraham Lincoln quit. Go ahead and tell me, he said. I want to hear your idea. I thought about it all morning, I began. If Abraham Lincoln quit, the world would be a very different place. We would have two countries. There would be the United States of America and the Confederate States of America. I stopped and looked up at my teacher. He looked around for a moment, then back at me. Go on, Mr. Carruthers said. Without the Emancipation Proclamation, the two countries would be very different. Remember when you told us there used to be big cities in the North and lots of farms in the South? Mr. C nodded. Well, I continued, I bet that nothing would change. In fact, I think the North and South would each do their own thing. We would have two different kinds of money, two different flags. There might even be a big wall separating the two countries. I waited for Mr. Carruthers to say something. He didn't. The, center, the southern states would have still have slaves, I bit my lip, and you might not be our teacher. After a few seconds, Mr. Carruthers nodded and pushed up his glasses. Fine work, Abigail. He handed my paper back to me and abruptly looked down the hall. Oh, good, he said, here they come. I looked where he was looking. Jacob and Zach were headed our way. Mr. C told us to meet him at the classroom after school, Jacob explained to me, but he didn't tell us why, Zach added. Are we in trouble too? No one is in trouble, Mr. Carruthers told us. Come inside. He was acting funny, like he had a big secret to share. We went into the classroom, but Mr. C stayed by the door. It was like he was waiting for one more person to join us. After another minute, Mr. C finally closed the door. He went to his desk and sat in his chair. Mr. C motioned for us to move closer to him. When we were standing right next to him, he whispered, it's not a game, you know. What isn't? Jacob whispered back. What if, Mr. C said, I could barely hear him talk, but I swear he said, it's true. I had no idea what Mr. Carruthers was talking about. Do you mean, what if Abraham Lincoln quit and ever issued the Emancipation Proclamation? I asked in my normal, loud voice. Shh, Mr. Carruthers pressed his finger to his lips. He looked over at the classroom door. I think he was making sure no one had heard me. The door was still closed. No one could have heard anything. Yes, he whispered at last. The questions I ask in class are real. Before school today, I went back to the year 1862 to convince Abraham Lincoln not to quit. He wouldn't listen to me. Suddenly, I noticed how red Mr. C's eyes were. He looked like he needed a nap. There was no way to force him to remain president. I couldn't issue the Emancipation Proclamation for him. I gave it my all, but he still quit. Mr. C took a deep breath and said, I need you to help me convince him. Zach rolled his eyes and made a crazy face. He thought Mr. Carruthers was telling us a funny joke or playing a trick. 
Why do you need us? He asked with a silly grin. We're just kids. We aren't even the smartest kids in class. Zach had a good point. I wasn't the smartest, but I sure tried the hardest. Jacob wasn't the smartest either, unless you counted everything he knew about computers. Mr. Carruthers looked at each of us for a long moment, then explained, you are each special, and together you make a great team. We sound like superheroes, Zach laughed. It's not a joke, Zach, Mr. Carruthers said seriously. He reached into his coat pocket and pulled out a handheld video game. It looked different from any game I've ever seen. There were four extra buttons and a bigger screen. I looked more closely. It wasn't a game. It was a computer. Mr. Carruthers took a square cartridge out of his pocket. It had a picture of Abraham Lincoln on it. When you put this into the back of the computer, it will take you to September 22nd, 1862, the day Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. After you convince him not to quit, take out the cartridge, Mr. Carruthers explained. The computer is programmed to bring you back to school. He handed Jacob the computer and cartridge. Wow, Jacob explained, exclaimed. His eyes lit up and sparkled with excitement. What are these buttons for? Jacob asked about the four little red buttons below the computer screen. Those buttons let you make changes in the computer settings, Mr. C explained. If you press the buttons, you can pick other places to visit or other times. Mr. Carruthers wrinkled his nose. You better get going. He handed Jacob his wristwatch. Keep track of your time. The cartridge only lasts two hours. That's perfect, I said. I have to be home at the end of club time. But is two hours long enough? Jacob asked as he put on Mr. Carruthers' watch. It was too big and slipped off his hand. He tightened it. It has to be, Mr. Carruthers said. I can't get you any extra time. There are a few flaws in the computer's design. Mr. Carruthers sighed loudly. You have only two hours. Then I heard him say under his breath, there's that also that awful explosion. Explosion? I asked, getting a little nervous. Never mind, he shook his head. The important thing is that you kids get to use a brand new cartridge. Unfortunately, I had no success this morning and used up my whole cartridge trying. Abraham Lincoln must issue the Emancipation Proclamation and free the Southern slaves on September 22nd, 1862. If he doesn't, when we wake up tomorrow, our world might be very different. He pointed at the essay in my hand. Good luck. Then our teacher left the classroom. Jacob turned the computer around in his hand, examining it. Where do you think he got this thing? He asked me. At the mall, Zach answered. I don't think he was joking, Zach. I didn't have time to say anything else because the classroom door swung open. It was Bo, the new kid. I forgot my backpack. He was looking down, shuffling his feet and talking so softly I could barely hear him. Mr. Carruthers told me to come get it after school. He didn't tell me anyone else would be here. Jacob tried to hide the computer behind his back, but Bo had already seen it. What's that? He mumbled. It's nothing, Jacob and I shouted at the same time. Mr. Carruthers hadn't... <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Mr. Carruthers hadn't told us not to show the computer to anyone else, but we were pretty sure it was secret. Whatever, Bo muttered, picking up his backpack to leave. Just then, Jacob accidentally dropped the cartridge. It slid next to Bo's feet. Bo picked it up. Here, Bo opened his hand. Jacob held out the machine and, without thinking, let Bo slip the cartridge into the back slot. Suddenly, a huge hole appeared in the floor right next to Mr. Carruthers' desk. A big green glowing hole with smoke coming out of it. Okay guys, so remember, before we started reading, Miss Bertram told you to pay extra close attention to some similarities and differences between Abigail and Mr. C. That's because today we're going to be talking about comparing and contrasting different characters. So, Miss Bertram made a Venn diagram of Abigail and Mr. C. So I want you to think of something that Abigail has that's different than Mr. C. I'm gonna give you just a second to think. And while you're thinking, Miss Bertram's going to write down her idea.
Were you able to come up with a good idea? What was it? Those do sound like some good ideas. Now, Ms. Bertram's idea was the fact that Abigail is a student and Mr. C is a teacher. I want you to be thinking of some other things that they have that are different. And I want you to tell Ms. Bertram and Mrs. Kidd in our Zooms later. But real quick, let's think about something. What is something that Abigail and Mr. C have in common? I think those are all good ideas. The one that Ms. Bertram is going to write, and I'm going to write it below the Venn diagram just because there's not a lot of room, is they both seem hardworking. Think about it. Mr. C is a teacher who um, also has been going back in time to help things, and so he's hardworking. And then Abigail, even when she got in trouble, was hardworking and trying to find out a way to answer his question when she felt like she didn't do it well in class. So be thinking of some other similarities and differences between Abigail and Mr. C. Tell Ms. Bertram and Mrs. Kidd in our Zoom sessions. And then you're also going to have an IXL which will help you practice comparing and contrasting different characters. I'll see y'all later guys. Have a great rest of your day.